craziness has been going on in Tennessee over the last month. And I, I haven't been watching the news, so I don't know anything about it. I had dinner with my daughter last night, and she told me about two stories. One I had heard a little bit about, the other I didn't know anything about. And I'm going to talk to you about them right now on Laugh or Die. Uh, these are two ongoing cases, unsolved, very little leads, if any, in both. One is on a, a teenager, Sebastian Rogers, 15 years old went missing out of Hendersonville, Tennessee around February 26th. The other is a Missouri college student here on a uh, fraternity get-together. He goes missing after getting kicked out of Lee Bryan's bar. Both missing, both active investigations. We'll start with Sebastian Rogers. Like I said, he's 15 years old. He went missing allegedly around February 26th. Supposedly, he'd left his mother's home in in, uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee, in the middle of the night or early in the morning, depending on how uh, you look at it. He left barefooted because all of his shoes are evidently accounted for. And supposedly, his flashlight is missing. So the mother is saying that maybe he walked out, wandered out on his own with his flashlight. His father... Uh, Seth uh, Rogers, I'm assuming is the last name, says that's impossible. He would never go out barefooted. He, when he was younger, he was barefooted and he wanted to step on what he thought was just a dirt mound and it ended up being a bunch of fire ants. So afterwards, he didn't want his feet in dirt. He didn't want to go barefooted. So, you know, that's, I would believe the dad. I would believe the dad on that. It's, I doubt that uh, this kid was just going to wander off, but it happens. The father says the boy's been missing for about two weeks. Couldn't have simply just vanished. So uh, the police, to try to find him, they searched the woods nearby, blasting the song Eye of the Tiger because it was Sebastian's favorite song. And they thought maybe if you heard it, he would come out and you know reveal himself. They, about 100 miles north, uh, the Kentucky State Police searched a landfill in Hopkins County for clues because I guess that's where the area trash would go to. But they came up with nothing. Uh, Supposedly, cadaver dogs had searched near the house. And the scent had been led to a construction site and then vanished. It's very, very upsetting. I mean, nobody wants to even think about losing a child or a child wandering off. It's very, very upsetting. The, The mother is Katie, stepfather Chris Proudfoot. And they had said, you know, uh, they felt overwhelming senses of helpless and hopeless grief. Um, Everything was pretty normal. He was playing in his room. When I told him to go to bed, he did. He said, good night, Mom. I love you. Uh, Supposedly, the stepdad, Chris, was working in Memphis about three hours, three to four hours from here. And I, I assume it sounds like he's a crane operator or something like that. So, fast forward to that Monday. Katie Proudfoot said she went to go wake her son up, but he wasn't there. So she thought, well, maybe he's making breakfast. So she went into the kitchen. He wasn't there. She searched around the house. And I guess at that point called her uh, her husband, his stepfather, and said they were running all around the house, outside, inside. She looked in from every closet, couldn't find him. And uh, they called the sheriff's office, made a report. She said it was rapid fire. They had cars here from down to the main road. There was an amber uh, amber alert released, and local and state forces were out and with uh, helicopters, drones, boats, horses, you name it, rescue and search dogs. Hundreds of trained professionals, volunteers, descended, trying to comb over about a 2,000-mile square uh, foot terrain on foot. Uh, gosh, you, you were having even mountain and cave experts coming out. Uh, a drone was rigged with a speaker that was playing Eye of the Tiger as well on loop. And uh, no no such luck. So there was a candlelight vigil, a vigil that was held the other night, Monday night, for him. And uh, it's just really sad all the way around. 
I'm understanding that Seth, the father, is a works for the sheriff's department. At least that's what I'm seeing. Now, the internet, Facebook in particular, is not really buying into the mom and stepdad's story. This one viewer, April D. Goodwin, says, let's break it down. Mom said Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m. on Sunday night. She talked to stepdad on the phone at 9.43, 9.46 Sunday. She was dozing off, but steadily talked till about midnight, and she went to bed. Mom woke up to, and went to get Sebastian for school around 6 a.m. Monday. was in his room. She went look looked for him for about three minutes and then called his stepdad. But evidently, the story is changing a little bit. But they three-way called the police. The mom stated he played with a flashlight and she couldn't find it, so he must have taken it. Uh, he left his phone behind. No shoes were missing. The door was locked. No neighbors, ring cameras have caught him at all. No cameras, period, have caught him at all. A ring camera footage from the neighbor uh, uh, saw him. No uh, blood. No no camera saw him. No bloodhound scented around the neighborhood at the house or beyond the area. The landfill was searched where the neighborhood trash goes. The father left leave of absence at the sheriff's department to search day in and day out for his son. Evidently, the mom and stepdad have not searched, not even one time. The father went to the candle vigil. The step parents, the stepfather and uh, mom did not. So, I, you know, I can't really just throw them to the wolves because of that. But it doesn't look good. That doesn't, that's a lot of stuff that doesn't look good. Now, there is a guy from New Mexico, JLR Investigates on YouTube, and he goes in to uh, talk about Sebastian uh, Roger's case, talking mainly about the stepdad, Chris Proudfoot, who is evidently from New Mexico, or has lived there for quite a while. He's got several ex-wives, but one of the ex-wives that's in there in uh, New Mexico is trying to sue for full custody because she says he's abused their, ch their child. And evidently he's got other uh, cases of assault and battery or what have you. But, uh, it's not looking good for the for the mom and the, the stepdad. So, uh, you know, the whole thing about him being barefooted, uh, it's just not, it's very, it's very, very alarming. So, TBI is urging the public to contact, if you know anything about it or have any uh, suspicions at all, dial 1-800-TBI-FIND or 615-451-451. 3838. Now, according to local news, WSMV, there's a timeline, and I'm going to go through it with you. So February 26th, the search un went underway for the missing teen. Uh, it was reported missing from the beach area of Hendersonville. There's like some schools named Beach in that area. It was last seen Monday in the area of Beach and Shackle Island Road near Long Hollow Pike. Uh, Sebastian's five foot five, about 120 pounds, soaking wet, uh, dirty blonde hair, was last seen wearing a uh, black sweatshirt and black sport pants. And it looks like he wears glasses. I don't know if the glasses were missing or not. So February 27th, Amber Alert goes out. The 27th also, uh, autistics, uh, authorities play the music to soothe and try to find him. Uh, they say that he, they know he likes cats. Uh, we're told his favorite song was I the Tiger. They tried uh, playing that in just a kind of a calm him and get him to come out. No luck. February 28th, donations poured in to the Premier Center event space to kind of help with the search. No foul play was suspected as the Amber Alert remained for the missing teenager. Investigators said that there was nothing leading them to suspect foul play took place and adding the family's been cooperating but the urgency that i mean the longer that they're gone the more you know less likely it is that they're going to be found in a good condition so the 29th investigators uh announced that there's no confirmed sighting of the missing teen on camera since his disappearance at all 
The sheriff's office said that while there's no sub- significant updates, they encouraged willing community members to search for Sebastian and partner up for safety. So on the 1st, March 1st, a dive team assists in searching for the team. Franklin police sent its dive team over to Sumner County to search for the missing teen. Uh, requests came from the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. More than 300 people searched for Sebastian. Uh, Chief Deputy Eric Craddock with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office said the private reward for finding him was in the works. So March 4th, what the parents say, you know, I just want my baby to be okay. Uh, The mother, Katie Proudfoot, and stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, sat down with WSM 4's Holly Thompson to discuss the days. Uh, sh- uh, the mother says, I, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Anyone. Chris says, uh, on one constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hopeless, many other emotions all in one, and it's a never ending world because it doesn't stop. The uh, Tennessee National Guard joined in the search for the 15 year old that went missing. Uh, gosh, 25 service members from Cleveland's. Two, uh, 252nd Military Police Company volunteered to, to look. Officials on the 4th announced they were scaling back the ground resources in search for Sebastian. They hadn't found the missing teen or no evidence that he wasn't alive. On the 7th, they went to the landfill. They searched the trash that was taken uh, from the teen's missing neighborhood. Nothing was found. On March 8th, no evidence was found at all in, in the, the thing, so there are negative results on the landfill. Fast forward to March 13th. No update. So that is where we are right now. We know nothing. Uh, so one of Channel 5, uh, one of the, Nick Barris, sat down and talked with the father. Uh, Seth, I believe it is, uh, about that. And uh, he says, you know, I hope he's still alive. That's my main hope right now, that he's not deceased. I pray he's alive and someone will see him and call 911. He act, In the interview, he urged, he said, you know, Sebastian, if you can hear me, call 911. You know, let someone know. We just want you home safe. You know, let someone know. Uh, doesn't shut up wearing green, which was Sebastian's favorite color. I, it's, again, it's going back to the whole he disappeared barefooted with a flashlight. He, uh, gosh, he, it's just, it's hard. And then it, there's, the question is, was the stepdad in Memphis? If, they, if she was on the phone with him for three hours, he may have had time to drive back. How about the pinging of the cell phones? We know nothing about this. We know nothing, like, things that, I watch a lot of murder shows. Uh, sadly, love my murder shows. And just, if this is going on, I'm not hearing anyone talk about it going on. You know, really looking into, because uh, the parents, and said parents are always the first to be suspects, for re- good reason. Someone in another Facebook group had said uh, that they thought there might be a, or maybe it was the the, the New Mexico jail. Robert said that there might be a uh, life insurance policy out on him. But he also said that uh, Chris wasn't very fond of the stepchild. So we, I mean, we're finding out he's not a great dude. So is it possible he's behind it? Is it possible the mom? Maybe they both struggled with having an autistic child. But also, we find out that they, the parents both had joint custody. They shared custody. But uh, after this year was over, Sebastian was going to go live with the dad full time. Now that, that could cause some strife right there. Uh, one, would that mean that the mom needs to pay child support now? And maybe she didn't want to do that. Maybe she didn't want her son to be gone. Maybe, who knows? Who knows? There's so many what ifs. And I hate to play the what if game, but you know, you've got to think of every possible scenario that could go with this. I mean, it's, 
Evidently, it doesn't sound like he's had a history of wandering off. I know some people with autistic do wander, uh, but supposedly this, this child had not had an instance of it that I found. The timeline is very odd. And especially if they've been changing their story. And why wouldn't you show up for the prayer vigil that happened Monday night? I mean, on the one hand, I'd be like, maybe it's just too much. I can't, I can't do it. I can't leave my house. What if my baby shows up? But evidently, uh, neither have been very vocal till recently. Chris, on some of these Facebook threads, or I'm assuming it's Facebook threads, uh, comes across as very combative and very... Well, ask me the hard questions. People want to know the hard questions. So somebody did ask, where were you working? Do we have proof of that? Do you have your cell phone records? Do you have this? I'm like, yeah, definitely. Do we have, you know, footage? Da, da, da. Were you really in Memphis that whole time? Were you lying about being in Memphis? Uh, it's just very suspicious. So, mm -mm -mm. and again, the dogs picking up the scent at some construction site. And we know he works with cranes. I don't know if this construction site they had to pick the scent up was any connection to Chris Proudfoot or not. But it's definitely something to look into, I would say. Oh, it's just, it's overwhelming. Definitely overwhelming. And now on to something that's equally as horrible, but it's happening or has the potential to happen so much more here in Nashville. Over the weekend, Friday, a University of Missouri student went missing after reportedly getting kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar on Broadway. Oh, wow. You know, uh, so this guy is named Riley Strain, last seen by his friends that night on Broadway. Uh, members of the, the family have traveled to Nashville to, to go in and look for him. He was last seen by his friends at that bar. He gets kicked out they lose contact of him. They call him on his phone. He's saying he's walking toward his hotel. So they don't think anything of it. When they get back to the hotel, they don't find him. They check everybody else's, everybody, uh, frat boy's uh, rooms. They don't find him. Now, there is video street cameras that show that evidently he didn't know what direction he was going. He was going the opposite way, away from the hotel. And that's very easy to do. If you're in a city that you don't know, you're not familiar with the lay of the land, and he looked very drunk in the videos. I mean, he's, I'm surprised he's standing. He's about six foot seven, barely weighs anything, so, you know, I don't know. His fraternity is the Delta Chai's, and they were here in town uh, for their annual spring formal, which I know those kind, they don't stay very formal, if you know what I mean. So he was last seen uh, before 9 p.m. getting kicked out of the bar. So that's what we know right now. Stepfather, Chris uh, Whited, said that Riley contacted his frat buddy, uh, buddy saying that he was leaving the bar, going to go to the hotel. So that's staying consistent. Friends weren't able to find him. They found his location using Snapchat, but all the phone calls went directly to voicemail after a certain time. They pinged it to an area that looks like it's right on the corner of right as you're going to go across the bridge to go to East Nashville. And uh, it's kind of like Gay Street and First Avenue, sort of. There is a very shady kind of garage that's there. Not well lit. It would, if he's stumbling, his butt, I mean, it looks like he's in some of these videos. He's just walking out in front of cars, barely, you know, getting hit not paying attention. He walks one direction and then like in a foot turns around to go another direction. It did not look like he knew where he was going and he was definitely not going toward any hotels at this point. He's right by, oddly enough, the police department and the courthouses. And there's foot traffic that you can see. There's people walking around. But it would have not been hard where he was that butts right up to the river. If he leaned over, if he fell, he could have fallen right over into the water. And if he did and didn't get trapped on any embankment, he could be way down the river by now. I mean, I hate to put that out there into the world, 
but it is. I mean, that's very much a possibility, especially when you're that drunk. I mean, it's, you got to be drunk, belligerent, or in a fight to get thrown out of a bar in Nashville. You got to really try. You have got to really try to do it. So surveillance footage showed that he took a wrong turn when returning to the hotel. Well, that much we know. He's wearing like a two-tone black and white shirt. Uh, if you ever saw the Cosby show where uh, Thea wants this fancy shirt, it looks like that, but only in black and white. His mother described him as a great kid. We miss him. We want him back so bad. And I know this has got to be just devastating. And I don't know much about Sebastian's case other than what I've told you. I don't know that there's been any plea from the mom on TV. But this woman, she's bawling, as I would expect her to be talking about. Yeah, this is the longest she's ever gone without talking to her kid. He's always texting me, calling me, FaceTiming me. He's always in touch. He's very communicative. So on Monday, University of Missouri officials released a statement saying they've been in touch with the family and authorities in Nashville who are working to find him. The safety of our community is our highest priority, said Angela King Taylor, who is the vice chancellor of student affairs. Our thoughts are with the Riley, Riley's family as the search continues. We'll be offering any support to them that we can, and we ch- and encourage anyone who needs help to reach out to our counseling services. So he is, I, I'm staying corrected, it says he's six foot five. Thin build, blue eyes, light brown hair. Last wearing this black, this is saying a black and brown button-up shirt with a black chest pocket, so it looks different than the picture in the, in the thing. Oh, so blue jeans, brown boots, black Apple watch. So back to Z- Sebastian's story for a second. Uh, he was confused why so little trace of his son could be found, saying there's missing pieces to the puzzle. He said, with the information I've gotten from Sumner County and the TBI, and the fact that the dogs aren't 100%, they're not picking up his scent. One dog tracked him to a construction area over there, not sure where he's pointing to, and it just disappeared. And it's confusing. There are missing pieces of the puzzle, and I'm having difficulty solving this. Now, in an article from the Tennessean dated today, search efforts are continuing into Wednesday for a missing University of Missouri student who disappeared during a visit to Nashville over the weekend. And it goes into the same thing that he was last seen at the bar on Broadway. Uh, He was in there for a private event in Nashville. The Office of Emergency Management launched a boat Tuesday to search the Cumberland River for strain and coordination with efforts with the police. Crews searched the riverbanks to determine if maybe he'd washed ashore or if he'd fallen near the river after surveillance video showed him stumbling across the Nashville streets really close to the Cumberland on Friday. But so far, officials haven't found anything. Oh my goodness. Uh, somebody says, uh, well, I guess this is Luke Bryan saying, y'all, this is scary, praying for a safe return. So his friend told the police that they got separated and he lost sight of strain and they tried using his location on Snapchat to find him, but weren't unsuccessful. All the calls went straight to voicemail. He wasn't found at his hotel on Rosa Parks Boulevard, about five blocks from the bar. There's a lot of hotels. That's what, you know, if he's walking out, where he is on Broadway, it would be hard to see because there's so much construction. There's so many new buildings going up. But where he was... If he would have just remembered, if you're going up the hill, you're going away from the bars. And he would definitely be walking up a hill if he was where he supposedly was. Uh, the friend told the police they got separated. Uh, he was last seen on Gay Street at 9.52 p.m. on Friday, March 8th, after drinking downtown. They searched the riverbank by air with uh, helicopters and drones as well as on the ground, but they so far have just not not found anything. So the police, Nashville police, have released video surveillance of Strang crossing First Avenue to Gay Street for about 11 seconds into the 44 seconds uh, clip. 
UC strain, wearing the, that split color black and tan button down shirt, uh, comes into frame from the right. He stops momentarily in front of a row closed sign, which is where we had the bombing, so all that is closed for construction. He appears to look at his phone from kind of like an arm's length away and then continues on, stumbling over himself at times. He finishes crossing the street, then he stops. He looks back, turning around and then stumbling toward the direction he came from. But then he turns back around, his arms kind of limply swinging, and he follows the crowd of people who pass him, continuing out of the frame toward Gate Street. So these people, the only thing I can think that they're doing is they're going to the parking garage. Because that's the only thing that would be over in that area, is if there was a football game, you'd walk that direction to go across the bridge to go to the stadium. But there's nothing like that going on right now. So either people are walking, so maybe they parked over there, or they're walking to the courthouse parking garage. Which, like I said, that area is very dark. Obviously, not a lot of cameras there. A uh, big homeless and drug use population there. It's, I mean, there's no part of Nashville that's super scary. But, I mean, some that you would definitely don't want to make yourself a victim. And being knocked down drunk, you're making yourself a target. I don't know that there was foul play. More than likely, let's be honest, if he's that drunk, he very easily could have just fallen over the side into the river, is what my guess would be. There's no confirmed sighting of uh, him, no confirmed sighting of Sebastian. It's just scary with as much technology as we have out there, as many cameras as we have out there, and there's no witness to any of it. So, a 911 call for Riley was reported missing nearly 16 hours after he was last seen. The 911 call was obtained by the News Channel 4. And it was re- it was uh, dispatched at 1.40 p.m. on Saturday. So, a whole 16 hours after the last time he was seen. He was last seen at around 9.45, being kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar with his friends. Uh, We're here on a fr- fraternity formal trip, said one of same, uh, Strange Friends. Uh, it's one of my good buddies. Dispatch asked, what's his name? His name's Riley Strain. He's white, 22, 65, blonde. The friend tells the dispatcher that he was last seen at Luke Bryan's bar around 10 o'clock. The last time his location on his phone was active, it was, I mean, right by the sheriff's office. At like 11 p.m. is what the friend is, is saying to him. And there's the footage that I can see, like I said, that's on the corner of first where church turns into gay and uh, first avenue and you can see in this frame you can see the river the river is right there it would not be a shock to think that he would have fallen into the water as much as i hate to say it it, that's most probably what happened now could he have met with foul play it's very possible i mean if you're that drunk you could look like a very easy target somebody could have grabbed him i don't care how big he is if he's that drunk it would be very easy to take advantage of him that's the thing about nashville so many people that are coming here they are making it a sprint to get as drunk as they can as quickly as they can and it, i've done it myself i'm just as guilty but when you do that at least i know what direction i'm going i know where i'm at i'm never lost downtown because i'm from here but if you're not, it would be very easy to end up going the wrong way. Where he was walking, like I said, the courthouse is right there. The sheriff's department is right there. So he should have been close to police. But if he was on that other side of the courthouse, he would it, be in a very dark area. It would have been very hard for him to have been seen. And like I said, very easy for him to slip into the water. Or thrown into a car. But I... There's so many people walking around, I think that would have been noticed. But it would have been harder. It would have been harder to notice someone falling into the water, if that makes any sense. So here we've got two instances of two males 
with no camera footage fi- showing their final moments. Where could they have gone? Where w- would they be lost? Now, with Sebastian, the 15-year-old, uh, let's be honest, more than likely the mom and the stepdad No more than they're saying. Their stories are changing subtly here and there. Uh, Supposedly the stepfather had mentioned multiple times that he had told the wife to to go to bed. But what's interesting, I've seen some pictures of what the house layout should look like. So she says she gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning, goes to his room to get him ready. Well, to do that, she would have had to walk right by the kitchen. The kitchen is a perfect view shot from her bedroom, the master bedroom. So she would have seen if he was in the kitchen, more than likely. But maybe, you know, you're in a fog, you're not thinking, you're walking straight to the kid's room. It's just things that don't seem very probable. And then with this, bless his heart, you know, this is why I say the buddy system is so important. Your friends failed you when one of them didn't leave with you. And knowing you were as drunk as you were. Because at least, if he would have would have fallen into the water, at least his friend would have been there to see it and gotten some help right away. And I see it all so often. It, women walking by themselves drunk. Uh, but men are just as easily to take advantage of being mugged or what have you. You got to keep your wits about you if you are not familiar with the area. It's a very safe downtown. There's police presence everywhere. But they can't be everywhere. So you've got to take some responsibility onto yourself of, you know, making sure you're in your safest possible situation. And I'm really, I'm sure the guys are kicking themselves too. But I'm like, that's where you failed your friend. If one get, gets kicked out, all of you should leave or at least one other leave. So there's nobody by themselves. And I'll see that all the time. I'll see a drunk guy wandering around. I'm like, where are his friends? Where are his people? I mean, God knows he could be anywhere, you know? And I I see that every weekend. And he evidently stumbled by a smoke shop. And the guy's like, I see that three or four times a day. You know, it's it's just what happens. I never once thought, oh, he's in danger, you know, or else I would have done something. And of course, now, knowing that he is in danger, the guy feels terrible. But, I mean, you see that constantly in Nashville. And it's becoming a problem. It's been a problem for a while. But, uh, yeah, so if you are in Nashville or if you're anywhere and you're drinking, make sure you have the buddy system. Have a friend with you. Because if he fell under the water, which would make sense why the phone quit working, or if he was mugged and the phone was thrown into the water, I mean... I'm just saying, his body is somewhere in that water. I hate to say it, I would love for him to be found alive. But chances are, I mean, today is, what, Wednesday? He's not going to be. Same with Sebastian. I would love to say that that boy is going to be found alive, but we know he's not. I mean, there, you, every of course, you will want hope. You want the hope upon all hope that, that they will both be found great. But too much time has passed. Too many weird, sticky circumstances with poor little 15-year-old Sebastian. Uh, like I said, I think the, the the mother and the stepfather know more than they're uh, saying. Now, could he have been kidnapped? I mean, the door was locked. The door was locked. Did he have his key with him? Did he lock the door when he went out and wandered off? Would somebody do that if they are just wandering off? Would they lock the door behind them? It's very difficult to say. He left his phone. I mean, how many teenagers, autistic or not leave their phones. I mean, so many red flags here, and I just wish and hope that the the police are on it the way we people are looking into it. Check those cell phone records of the stepdad. Where's it ping? Is he staying in Memphis the whole time? Was he in Memphis the whole time? Was he ever in Memphis? Did he have anything to do with it? Look at his criminal background, which I'm sure they will. Hopefully to God they will. See what uh, supposedly the stepdad according to that jail uh yeah jlr investigates said that there was supposed to be a court case that involved chris and sebastian was supposed to be a witness i don't know if that's true or not sounds bizarre but weird enough to be true so if you know anything about either of these cases please please call your local police 
call the TBI, anyone, any information, even if you don't think it's relevant, may lead to something. If you see lights go on and go off in a house that aren't normal, if you see a, a car acting suspicious leaving that Hendersonville area, uh, look into it. And, and especially if you've got a friend that's drunk downtown, take care of your friends and take care of yourself. Thank you for listening to the Laugh or Die podcast. <laughs>